So no, <laughs> <laughs> not again, not again. Uh, we we make the joke every time, but yeah, because um, yeah. we're unoriginal so and we, not funny. Okay, we watched Donnie Darko and Moon. Yeah, this is a this is a double feature. So Moon actually, I I while we're watching, I was like, this movie has a one million dollar budget, but it's five million dollars, which that's, that's still, still not crazy. Much. That's, that's not much. You know, that's crazy. I I was quite impressed with um. Uh, with Moon, I, I was about to say I'm quite impressed with both, but I've, Donnie Darko is one of my favorite movies, so mm. I know I'm impressed with that one. But uh, Moon, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think it was a cool uh, premise. Yeah. And they did it very well with the budget that they had. There's some fort in there as well. You're yeah. Thinking about dying, death. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think if you're going to like tackle a space movie, right? Yeah. What you need to do is make it not corny. Okay. Because if you make it too spacey Every, you you know what i mean by that you know what you, i mean what by you that. mean like like where there's Kevin like spacey? laser laser holographic screens and all that's that not shit corny that's cool it's it's cool to an extent if it's a rip off a of blade runner and it's and that's like the main show like look at this space hologram computer do you know what the borderline between it is what oblivion if you go any Yay. further than that it becomes corny Oh, yeah, because it's very, like... It's very, like... She has a holographic table it's, and all that shit, yeah. and the spacecraft is, like... It is it's of, all spherical and, like, it's, futuristic, and all, everything's white. A cool thing about Oblivion, they didn't use a green screen for Oblivion, for the uh, yeah, tower Yeah, they used segments. one of those, like, LED... Yeah, they used um, one of the... Um, screen stages or whatever. Unreal Tournament... I mean, Unreal Tournament. Unreal, tournament, yeah. Unreal Engine, Engine, like, reproduction kind That's of a really things. cool thing to look into if you are... It's a interested neat, in movies and how they film them. It's a neat technology because um, camera calculation matrix perspectives. That's yeah. that that sentence was butchered as fuck. <laughs> uh, projection projection matrices for cameras are hard to compute, especially when you're looking at LEDs. Yeah. So it's quite impressive that it worked that well. Yeah. It it did work very well in that movie. Yeah, but that's um, not the movie we're talking about. No, we're talking about um, Donnie Darko and Moon. Let's talk yeah. about Donnie Darko first. Okay. Donnie Darko speaks to me on a existential kind of level. Me fucking too. I feel very like I I don't think I'm wrong in saying that this movie holds a spot, a dear spot in both of our hearts. Yeah. Because, I remember like showing it to you like a while ago, and you yeah. were just like, dude. Because <laughs> the, the, think about. What would I have been? Maybe fifteen yeah. when you showed me this movie, and fifteen-year-old Geordie. Picture this fat fifteen-year-old Geordie with his disgusting Justin Bieber haircut because he thought it was cool, and he's in his room. You didn't have a Justin Bieber. I haircut. had a Justin Bieber haircut. My mom sent me a bunch of photos recently, okay. like kid photos, and I look like Justin Bieber if he was chubby and yeah, like couldn't sing. He was chubby when he started. That's true. He if was he a could sing, Geordie, could he ever sing? He can sing very well. <laughs> But um, anyway, so picture this: fifteen-year-old Geordie. He's in bed because all I did while I was at school was go home and like watch mm. movies and uh, well, watch play, TV shows, play Minecraft, or play Minecraft. Me and the bros. That's all I do now, really. Yeah. But um, it's a good life, and it is a good fucking life. Yeah. So picture fifty. You know, picture you're picturing, right? I said it enough. You're picturing me. Okay. And then Tom sends. Well, yeah, he probably didn't send it to me. You're probably like, hey, you should watch this movie. And I hated horror movies. Hated them, hated them, hated them. Is this a horror movie? I think it... Well, I, I just... I didn't watch anything with a name that sounded scary because what? I was so scared. Because as a kid, I think I've talked about this on the show. It might have been Split View. What, like, I was friends with one of the counselor's sons. Yeah, you, I think you did say it's Yeah, I was friends with one of the counselor's sons in my area. You watched, like, Mirrors And we went and saw Mirrors, yeah, yeah, in the cinema. And it, I couldn't sleep properly for like two years after that because like that's how much i couldn't look in mirrors i had to like cover them up when i would have a shower and like an old person in a spooky house literally like i look our house probably looked like a crackhead house (laughs) if you went inside it cracked and mom had to like explain it to everyone who went to the bathroom and then washed their hands or something while all the mirrors were covered up like i (laughs) i i was very embarrassed by it but like it was it was you know that's what scarred me for horror movies right i didn't want to watch them ever after that Tom sends me this movie. This isn't a horror movie. It's like a thriller, would you say? I I don't even think you can classify it I don't as, think, as I either don't, of them. I don't see it as horror, to be honest. I just don't see it as anything like... It's creepy and unnerving, Unsettling. but I don't see it as horror. No, because there's no jump scares. There's no horror movie tropes. Yeah. The, the scary part of the movie is just there. 
always well not always but like it's the it doesn't like music doesn't build up and he reveals himself he's just there and i think that's why i like it so much because it goes it uses no horror movie tropes and yet it still fucking scares me i um like it, it unnerves me and it makes me think introspectively about my life because it's it's what would you say the plot is I this is the thing. Uh, what was your first reaction to watch? What like do you remember what you felt when you watched it the first time? What yeah, did you I take was, out of it? What do you think the movie was? I was fucking scared because I had never watched anything like that before. Yeah, and I still don't think I have watched anything like that. But now I can fall asleep to a horror movie. Whereas what back is it, then, like, I was like under my covers, scared shitless. Yeah, and I was thinking the whole time, I'm like, I can relate to this, but I don't know why I can relate to this. Yeah, and I was just entranced by it. I couldn't turn it off. I was just like, this is this is a a great movie, and I can't even tell you why. It's like it's just this is. I just relate to it. I don't know. I I feel like that's, so stupid saying this, but it's no, like no, no, no. I, I get you because that's yeah. that's what I I don't think of the movie as like kind of a what the movie is presenting itself. I think yeah. of it more of like an existential kind of exploration. Like to me, yeah, the movie is word. kind of about him. Ex- accepting his like death i guess like in, in the yeah. five stages of like grief or like acceptance or whatever because acceptance is one of the stages yeah because yeah. what what it what it what really happens is that i guess he knows he's gonna he, the rabbit literally tells him he's gonna die yeah like it's the end of the world like the movie it, i guess we should kind of explain yeah. i mean it's you should have watched it. Like the point of this is to kind of talk about the movie i guess yeah but, like as i'll keep mentioning it maybe one or two more episodes yeah. until this becomes a real proper thing i always put the movie that we're gonna watch next week uh, yeah. we're gonna review next week in the description of the f- previous episode so in this episode's description if you look on youtube spotify itunes whatever you're listening on it'll tell you what we're going to review next week and then you can go and watch yeah. it or maybe like watch it before it comes out or something or you see it comes out then you watch it then you listen because the point is, is that like we're going to spoil it, mm. we're going to talk about it. That's like that's just what we're going to do on here. Like, I mean, we're not going to review new movies, probably. Yeah, but it depends. Yeah, yeah, but it's well, we can't even go to the movies at the moment. But mm. yeah, anyway, that's the point of why we put it in the description so that you can watch it. But if you want to know, this is the last chance I'm going to say we're about to spoil it. Yeah, yeah. But what happens is that like plane engine crashes into his house right yeah and then the rabbit well the rabbit kind of gets him away from that but that's that's the strange part because that kind of the point of the movie is that it's a splinter in time like yeah there is there's a multiverse happening and the engine crashing into his house splits the universe into two defined lines yeah one like one line where he lives and one where he dies and the point of the movie is to get him back to the end and then complete, like, end the splinter. Yeah. Like, everything in the universe happens to get him to that goal. Like, yeah. Like, the thing with the cellar door. You remember that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, what the fuck was their name again? Cameron Diaz? No. Uh, oh, um, shit. Drew Barrymore? Drew Barrymore, yeah. She uh, she was like, oh, you know, the most beautiful phrase in the world is cellar door, which is a fucking yeah, lie. Yeah, That happened because he needs to go there to like continue the cycle yeah things are random happen to lead him to the goal of completing the cycle or ending it yeah so and then throughout that he he's kind of depressed he's going to his psychologist like being crazy and acting manic and all that and yeah jack and yeah well almost but yeah the movie like it's about accepting death i guess or like absolutely i agree you know i agree but i also think this is really one of those movies where Every single person will take something different from this movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. 100%. The first time I watched it, I didn't even pick up on the time splintering thing. Yeah. I was just like, this is what happens if you don't take your meds. The movie just is just shit. wild it's without just wild. that. Yeah. yeah. And and Jake Gyllenhaal, can I just say... He's a creepy dude. He is... Well, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say he's one of my favorite actors of yeah. all time because he's fucking brilliant. He, but yeah. he did play this part very well because oh, yeah. he is kind of creepy. Perfectly. He, like... He's he's just I feel like I don't think I've ever seen him in a role where I'm like yeah he shouldn't have done that <laughs> like he, it's it's just he shouldn't just have done that boy any role he does he does it well mm. I even saw that one weird Netflix movie Velvet Buzzsaw and he was even good in that what the fuck yeah okay. it was like a weird art movie <laughs> but, alrighty yeah so if you watch this movie which I highly recommend you do this one gets a recommended from me 
absolutely million times yeah. over is just like take it in the first time experience it don't go in with any pre-notions even though you've already probably watched it if you're listening to this that's a cool sentence now that you you've rewatched said. now that you've watched it once right yeah wait a while watch it again and okay. I guarantee you'll get something different yeah you, you will look at it differently like I was pointing out to Geordie when we watched it, there's so many hidden details as well. and like, Oh, yeah. Just things, like, you'll notice things in this movie happen just for seemingly no reason. Weird things will happen. You'll kind of notice this kind of, like, plot line of, like, the splintering thing. Like, yeah. Pay, oh, the music is great as well. The acting's great. Oh, yeah. It's thoroughly unsettling, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, the soundtrack is, is fucking really good. Yeah, I you're guess right. if we don't have much more to talk about, we'll move on to Moon. Yeah. Yeah. So since it was your first time viewing it, what did you think of Moon? What um, do you, you think, like, the point of the movie is, I guess? I think it's sort of a uh, moral dilemma, which we like here on the show. I think it's kind of an ethics dilemma, more than anything. Yeah. I, I think, well, they both kind of go in hand yeah, in hand. Yeah. But it's... it's so, well, let's let's talk about the premise then, yeah. shall we? Um, so there spoilers, is... Spoilers, obviously. Spoilers this coming up. This is a up. movie, like... There is a twist in this movie. There is so. a twist, and we, we will mention it. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it. Or if you don't really care, good. you can just listen yeah. anyway. But it's... um. So there is a guy who just sort of... Sam Bell. Sam Bell. He just sort of wakes up... We just sort of start the movie, right? He's going... He's on the moon. He's harvesting what? <laughs> Helium-3. Helium-3, right? It's for fusion reactors. And we're told pretty early on in the movie that he has a three-year contract yeah. on the moon where he has to do his duties and all that. but he is the only one there with an AI for a companion Gertie played by Kevin, Kevin Spacey, Spacey which is kind of perfect since he comes off as the creepy AI yeah the AI and is it's Kevin Spacey Gertie Gertie is very creepy through the yeah. whole movie fucking emojis as like the main yeah. like, display it was giving me massive fallout vibes yeah I don't, you know some people might see that some people might not what the the police robots from New Vegas yeah, yeah. how they all had like smiley faces and all that yeah. shit it's like it's I, I always like that effect because mm. it's like you really are mixing old and new technology yeah. with that. But anyway, so yeah, we're told he has three years to do this, right? And it comes to a point where he goes out into the field and he crashes. Is that Am I remembering yeah. that right? Because I don't want to fuck this up. He's going through a repair not great. and he crashes. Yeah, he goes into there and he crashes. And then he wakes up on a hospital bed somewhere. Exactly. Well, does he? <laughs> that's well yeah uh, he does yeah. but we you technically he does technically he technically does, yes. Sam Bell wakes up on a bed yeah and then it follows for a little bit more of just sort of like basic activities and then yeah. he goes out and notices it right when he's doing his just like regular shit or something is Gertie's that right? not letting him outside oh that's right Gertie doesn't let him outside so he, he gets like house sick like everyone else is right now being quarantined yeah. And he just says, I just need to go outside for yeah. a second. I just, I just need to go outside. And he goes outside and he finds the wreckage, right? Yeah. And, you know, there's like... There's surprise. A surprise. It wasn't actually him woke up. It was a clone. Yeah. And the old Sam Bell is still in the, the fucking harvester repair car thing. So now there are two Sam Bells. And... And they're strangely okay with it. Yeah. They just sort of they like... Which is very realistically realistic. They yeah. don't want to kind of... I think that's them kind of being like, I don't want to think about this because if I think about this too much, I'll come to the conclusion that I'm a clone. Yeah. You know what if I mean? You, if you internalize that too much, yeah. you will get fucked up by it. It's a dangerous thing for a brain to perceive. Oh, yeah. Like, it was... it was. I think they handled that really well. Yeah. Rather than going like, oh my God, and doing like the classic, like they put their hand up and like try and mirror it or some yeah. shit you know it's like you're not the same fucking person you just, just well it's kind of genetically f- you're the same person but you're not the same person i mean you know what i mean but hey, maybe are. that's one of the dilemmas yeah. you know but anyway I, so the rest of the plot of the movie is they try to you know there's a there's a quote unquote rescue team coming to yeah. help them and they try <laughs> and uh they find the source of all the clones yeah you know and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them right and i think the movie wants you to think about like should if if this is going to happen whether it's okay whether it's okay whether it's ethical and moral yeah and i think most people would say no here's the thing right so if that if he never if that never happened he would live a happy life 
he would he gets messages yeah. from his from his wife. He's happy. He's doing good. Yeah, he fi- he, he think- later goes outside beyond the yeah confines of his sort of work area outside on the moon and calls his wife and his wife's been dead for a certain amount of years and his daughter's yeah. all grown up and he finds out right but what he's been fed through the station that he's working on is like regular messages and yeah. phone calls and shit like or not phone calls but like video Audio messages mess, yeah. and shit and he just plays them back and he memorizes them because you know he misses her so much and in his head after that three years is up He's going back to Earth yeah. to live with them. But, he's, but he's, instead he gets fucking vaporized. There have been like nine other clones because you see nine pods with red lights on them and yeah. they're probably used. And those those clones lived out like their lives seemingly harmoniously they were going home. Yeah. completely normal they lives. They were never kind of suffering really. They were just like, oh, I'm going home now. You know, I've, I've finished my three year contract. I'm going to go home to my lovely wife and child. And here's the thing though the original Sam Bell. Yeah. Is he on Earth? Did he ever actually yeah. go on the moon? Yeah, you, you hear him on the video call. Oh, you do too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, again, my memory's not, not great. Mm. But like, so in that case, right? Yeah. If you agree to this, you, you Tom, agree to this, yeah. right? You go, you, you, they, they go into a meeting and they say, all right, we're going to clone you. Yeah. You're going to live fine. But your clones are just going to be up on the moon on three-year cycles. They won't know any different. They will be happy, seemingly, the entire time. Yeah. He got lonely, but I don't think he was ever, like, depressed at any point. Like, no, he, he seemed good. a bit lonely, you know? But it was never anything serious that you yeah. would know. Like, would you do that? Probably no. I, I wouldn't personally do that. Kind of Because I know that if you left a Geordie up there for three yeah. years, bad shit would happen. Yeah. Man. Bad okay. shit would happen, yeah. man. Like, it's, it's, that's, that's not a good mix for me. But if I was, like mentally sound and I knew all this stuff and I knew I was going to die or something and I was like I can preserve my knowledge that is so important that I it it would be worth it to replicate myself constantly to keep this going they don't know that the thing is they don't know that this is happening to them like they're seemingly they've been cloned without the memory of oh I'm going to clone myself yeah they sort of have like jaded memories of like when they were being brought up and stuff like enough to make them not question anything yeah so in reality is it fucked up yes oh yeah because you kill them all whether i was kind of be playing devil advocate but whether or not they're suffering up there or know that they're clones it's still a fucked up thing to do you're creating and destroying human life you know yeah like if you're especially also like being up there by yourself for three years I, I said to Tom, I don't think that would ever happen. I don't think you would ever be allowed to have one person on a spaceship people are or a on, space people station. People are on the ISS for, like, years. But the people. Yeah, but there's Gertie. Like, this is a technological place where he yeah, has everything he needs and Gertie is there to, like, you monitor him. Your brain is not going to have the same connection as you would if you had I think, another person. I think there. there are certain people who can live isolated. And you know what? If there was someone who was going to do it, it would probably be me. I, I, you were fucking going mental about not being going to a club and all that. Yeah. So. Well, I once I got over that part, I would have yeah. been fine. I think. Like it's just, I, I love being mm. by myself. Right. Okay. Like that's how I decompress. That's how I. But again, three years by myself—that's a long fucking time. Yeah. That is a long fucking time. That's how I know that even the Geordies of the world, if they went up there. You would, you would, I think just for safety reasons, need to have a second person up there. <laughs> okay. Right? Survival buddy. Yeah, like... Maybe you send two Geordies up. Yeah. That, okay. If if I went up there willingly with a clone of myself, yeah. that would be fun as fuck. Literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, hey, I'm not, I'm not above trying anything once, you know? It's is it is give it give myself is it do you fuck yourself is I've asked you this literally yeah, yeah, is yeah. it gay is it gay if it's yourself yeah I think it was on the show too the, wasn't the it the thing is that doesn't matter yeah <laughs> it literally no doesn't matter if I'm just up there fucking the myself thing is, does years. it really matter if you're gay or not like what the fuck no, does it that matter doesn't. Yeah. That's, the, that's the funny thing about that <laughs> yeah. question is that that's, like it literally doesn't that is the funniest fucking thing to me on 4chan there's the meme of like our traps gay. Does it even matter? Yeah. Does it... What if is, you like yeah. to jerk off to traps... Power to. Yeah. Power have to. Have fucking fun, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, y- you know, who actually cares? Mm. There's not the trap police that's going <laughs> to bust in through your window and go, 
get that thing out of your hands right now or we'll have okay. to shoot. I'm imagining the trap police are traps. Oh, like, sure. They're just police, but it's yeah, traps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Internet policing and regular policing. Yeah. Uh, I think that's kind of what we had to talk about unless you had oh, anything hang else on. to... Do you recommend Moon? Yeah, I'd say I, so. I recommend it it's as well. It's not my favourite movie, but it's it's got something to it. It's a nice It ethical. definitely, like... You, you, I'm, I'm assuming the people who are listening to this, they have the same sort of view on movies yeah. as us, right? So if you want a, a movie to just sort of, like, think a little bit mm. about, then put this movie on. And if you want to put something on that you really want to fucking think about until you fall asleep that night, put Donnie Darko on. Yeah. Because you will. It's an experience. Yeah, it sure is. All right. Well, take it easy, everyone. Enjoy. And tune in to Split View on Sunday. Okay, bye.